The following is a presentation of SC State Athletics. It's homecoming this week in Orangeburg, South Carolina, as the South Carolina State Bulldogs host the Dragons of Virginia Lynchburg. You have to forgive Buddy Pugh's group if they don't seem too hospitable toward the Dragons. The Bulldogs have only won one game so far this season, and if they want to play for a conference championship, their margin of error is tiny. On the other hand, the Dragons have not won in five games, but they won't get any sympathy from the Bulldogs or Bulldog fans here today at the Oliver C. Dawson Bulldog Stadium, Willie Jeffries Field. Is this the game that South Carolina State gets back to being the Bulldogs? We're about to find out. Coming up next on the Buddy Pew Show. Pressure coming, you gotta let it go. Throws it out there. Oh, Coach, first off, it's homecoming. Yeah, what homecoming about this crowd here in Orangeburg? Well, anytime you got homecoming, you need to win a football game. You got all the alumni back and all the friends and family. Everybody worried me about tickets and all kinds of stuff. I'm glad we got a game going so I can get all that kind of stuff behind me. We can get to the game. You're talking about getting to the game, Coach. It's important <laughs> that you play well. Virginia Lynchburg's had a tough time this season, but anytime you get on the football field, anything can happen. You're exactly right. We need to play good, though, because this leads us into our conference, and everybody – you know, it's buzzing about how well Central played, you know, a couple of nights ago. But, hey, we got no time to be thinking about that. We got to get these guys through our system. And we need to come out of it on a good positive note so that we can go into our league, you know, on a good, sound, positive attitude. Talk about um, on a positive. The fourth quarter of last week's game, if you could somehow replicate that, Coach, how do you get the team – to get that sense of urgency you had in the fourth quarter against Florida well, A&M. Well, let's, let's hope that we find, you know, the right formula for what we've got to do to make you know, the right kind of plays happen. We didn't finish, though, Ernest, and that's, that, that's the sad part of the whole deal is after having gotten ourselves back into the dadgum thing, we don't finish the game. So it's heartbreaking that you do all you got to do there to make that happen and then couldn't quite make the whole, whole, the whole deal come in. But I tell you what, this crowd, you know, has that ability. You see a little light at the end of the tunnel down there. If we can make it happen on a more consistent basis, and that's what the mission is right now, then we'll be okay. You start talking about the team coach emotionally. I don't think we will have played in front of a larger crowd at homecoming for this group. I think that's going to add some juice to your team on both sides of the football. We, th we hope we're looking for a wonderful crowd today, and we like to think that the excitement of it all, you know, you know, create some buzz in a way where it gives us a chance to get, you know, look up and say, hey, you know, we got to go out and play good for these folks. These guys have a, a, a wonderful opportunity to play at a place like this. And this is a chance for them to, you know, shine in front of big crowds and a lot of noise and all that kind of stuff. This is a fun deal. You get a, This is why you come to college to play football right now. So I'm hoping that, you know, we go out and play really well today in front of this crowd. Coach, of course, if you're going to win a day, you got to win both sides of the line of scrimmage. Talk about how important it is for your offensive line to get some positive things on film for them. Our two captains today are Cam Johnson and Chris Simon, the two offensive tackles. That means we got to run the football, right? Then we come back on defense and we got Zion Keith and DeMarcus Doe on the back end of the defense. So we got a chance to have, you know, a real good you know, defensive, offensive showing. We look like we're going to be ready to play these guys today. You talk about today. What's going to be the key to getting a win and getting out of here? Running the football, as always. You know, stopping the run, forcing these guys to have to throw the football. If they can do that, then I think we got a shot to be All okay. All right, Coach. Best of luck this afternoon. All right, guys. Zimmerman approaches. High end over end kick, deep kick, and this is going to be number five. That is Eddie Dumas. Dumas tackled down right at the 20-yard line on the return. Shotgun snap back to Andrus in the end zone, trying to get away. Andrus does get away in the end zone. We had him in the end zone. Now he goes out of bounds at the five-yard line. Had the safety. Shotgun snap on third and 11. Corey Fields throwing it down the field. It is caught. Rakim White into the end zone. Touchdown, South Carolina State. So with 12 21 to go here in the first quarter, Corey Fields hitting Rakim White for a score, and that makes it seven for South Carolina State. Nothing for Virginia Lynchburg. Four receivers to the left. Now Anderson comes from the line of scrimmage into the backfield with the quarterback, Dumas. 
Running to the right side. Doom is in trouble. Wrapped up. Jalen Barr had him. Got away. Now wrapped up. Brought down. Good tackle on the part of South Carolina State. Making the tackle for the Bulldogs. That was number 98. Tank Minner. Pistol formation. Give over to Kendrell Flowers. Over the left side. Across the 20. Kendrell pushes the power forward up to about the 27-yard line. Second down and two. They give it to him again. Same play over the left side. Kendrell getting outside at the 35. Out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Shaq to the left. Rakim to the right. Shotgun formation, Corey. Play action fake, throws it out in the flat to Shaq. To, uh, this is Rakim White. White breaks free at the 25-yard line, at the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Rakim White. His second touchdown of the afternoon. Our score, South Carolina State 14, Virginia Lynchburg nothing. And, Bill, we talked about the Bulldogs getting back to being the Bulldogs, and we've seen that on the first two possessions. Dragons blitzing. They throw a screen. Jawan Moody catches at the 40-yard line at the 35. Moody down to about the 29-yard line. Ken drills back in and running back. They throw it out in the flat. It's caught by Rakim White. Tries to make a man miss. Breaks the tackle to the 30. Still trying to get outside. 25 still on his feet. Rakim White, Bill, running with a lot of purpose this afternoon. A seven-yard pickup. Corey's in the shotgun. Shotgun snap. Corey looking long. Throwing it out. They got Shaq Davis caught. Touchdown, South Carolina State. Corey Fields from 22 yards out to Jaquan Davis. So with 2.15 to go here in the first quarter, our score is South Carolina State 21. Virginia Lynchburg nothing. Back to pass. Here comes pressure. He's in trouble again. Wrapped up. Still on his feet. Going to be brought down back at the 15-yard line. Here's the snap. Back to pass. Kendrell throws a slant caught. Jordan Smith makes the catch at the 42-yard line. What a catch by the freshman from Ridgeview High School. His second catch is the Bulldog, and it's for a Bulldog first down. Richard Bailey's in the slot. Back to pass. Corey's looking to the right. Looking long. Corey's in trouble. Trying to buy some time. Shuffles it to Kendrell. Kendrell trying to get to the flag. Gets to the flag. <laughs> Two receivers each way. Shotgun snap, Corey, back to pass. Corey looking long, Corey throwing it out there. Got a man out there, Rick M. White makes the catch up at the 40-yard line of South Carolina State. What a nice throw and catch from Corey Fields to Shaquem White. And that is the end of the first half of play here in Orangeburg. Our score at the half is South Carolina State 21, Virginia Lynchburg nothing. All right, Coach, first half, Virginia Lynchburg defense went on the field first, and you pretty much controlled things along the line of scrimmage, which you hope you do, and you're able to do that. It's generally our style that we like to defer and then give them the football, put our defense on the field first. Our defense really dominated this offense, so we got a chance to get some short fields because our defense kept pushing them you know, around and giving us to be somewhere around the 50-yard line. And you talk about dominating the line of scrimmage. The offensive line dominated the line of scrimmage. Unfortunately, I don't think the running backs kind of cooperated. Yeah. But they moved some people yeah. out of the way, and you were able yeah. to score in your first three possessions. We were able to run the football some early, and uh, not quite as consistent as I'd like to. And we hit some balls that, you know, that gave us a chance to make some big chunk yardage. We went on fourth down a time or two, you know, the early part of the game. I think we got to the point now where you never know if we're going to punt, but at the same time, we do like the idea of the fact that we got three good scores, you know, to start the football game. You talked about your captains today, Cam Johnson, of course, Chris Simon coach in uh -huh. that offensive line, and uh -huh. you wanted to put some responsibility on them and kind of put the game on their shoulders. I did. Both those guys, I think, are really good football players, and they're starting to kind of come on now. Uh, Cam's really got another year or two left. Uh, Chris is in grad school, uh, one from something, one from Columbia. So both those guys are, you know, I think good football players, and I think they, you know, started to – Turn the corner a little bit today to see if we can get the running game going. All right, now in the first half, the Bulldogs scored on the first three possessions, Coach, but then we went 0 for the second quarter yeah. and had some missed opportunities. Yeah, and we had drop balls in there, too. We had a, a, a drop deep ball, another kind of player, too, that didn't quite work out for us. But from that point, I think that we probably tried to throw it around a little bit too much and couldn't figure out how to run the football. We probably need to run the football a little bit more at that point. And on the defensive side of the football, Coach, you got some young kids. Makaya Settles had a really good ball game uh, inside and really stabilized that defensive front. Right. Makaya is a uh, defensive tackle from AC Floor High School in Columbia, and we think a lot of him. We think he's going to be a good inside guy. The one ball, we got two good young because Bob is also a freshman. He's a redshirt freshman who plays in a two big beefy kind of guy. So we got some inside guys in there. Uh, Ahmad Hall, one of our young uh, defensive ends from down in Florida, who's a high school freshman also. He and Makai, both you know, freshmen this year, seem to be coming on. So we think we got a couple of guys 
that might be uh, defensive front guys that could be good for years to come here. You know, we kind of struggled a little bit, Coach, offensively, but uh, Gavin Zimmerman and that, off, that, 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 that special teams unit yeah. came together and made every opportunity. Gavin made field goal or two. He's a little bit slow. I like him to be, I think Simpson is probably working on right now trying to figure out how to block his field goals. But if he gets some time, you know, he knocks it through that pretty good. And, in the last couple of years, I don't think Gavin's missed him about one field goal. You start talking about South Carolina State Bulldogs led at the halftime 24 to nothing. We'll take a time out here on the Buddy Pew Show. We'll come back with more after these messages. Yeah, when I first got to high school, my form was really good. And so I had a couple of uh, soccer coaches that I used to kick, and they were helping me out. And then I went to some kicking camps that would uh, help me out too. So that's when I really started working on my form and getting it better. Well, this summer I really started uh, doing a lot of band work with my coach from uh, back at Crestwood, Coach Newman. He started helping me out a lot. We really started back my senior year doing that. And um, I mean, you can also do a lot of like stuff to work on like your quads and like your calves and your core. Cause you get a lot of power from your core. So you can do a lot of like, um, Ab work, squats, calf raises, stuff like that. All right, it's time for the Prisma Health Injury Report, Coach. It's not really a long list for the uh, Virginia Lynchburg game. You're exactly right. Our main goal was to win the football game and to come out healthy. Uh, I think we may have had two guys that didn't play. Uh, Yancey Washington, one of our tight ends, uh, didn't play Jameer Benjamin, one of our corners. But besides that, our team is pretty healthy. So I'm looking to uh, see if we can get all those guys up and ready to go this coming week. Yeah, I made a critical mistake on the radio. If you listen to the radio broadcast, I was under the impression that Patrick Garbo, when he was thrown out of the game for targeting, wouldn't be available for the North Carolina Central game, Coach. But you mentioned me, since it was in the first half, right. he didn't play the second half of this game. Best case scenario, if you're going to get one, toward the end of the second quarter. So you made almost the first, all of the first half. And then at that point, then you go on about the task of sitting the second half, and then you come back the first quarter of the next game. So Patrick Garbo will be with yeah. us when South Carolina State entertains North Carolina Central. We'll take a time out here on the Buddy P Show. We'll come back with more after these messages. Kick it off is Virginia Lynchburg from right to left. Singletary fields it at the 13-yard line, at the 15, at the 20, at the 25, at the 30. Spins at the 35 across the 36-yard line. Good return by Tarion Singletary. Play action fake, want to go long. Got Shaq out there, caught at the 25. Shaq at the 20, driven out of bounds at the 15-yard line. So another big reception. Throw and catch Shaq Davis and Corey Fields. It's a good snap. Jordan gets it down. Gavin's toe is in it. It hooks. It is up and it is good. So Gavin with Zimmerman. Stays from perfect. 28 yards out with 12.33 to go here in the third quarter. Our score, South Carolina State 24, Virginia Lynchburg nothing, fourth down and eight. Back to pass. Throws a slant. It's caught Richard Bailey. First down, Bailey breaks the tackle at the 25. Breaks free. They still got him by the jersey. Bailey fighting forward to the 17-yard line. And listen to the crowd. Appreciate the effort of Richard Bailey, who's not the biggest person on the team by a long shot. Feels. Back to pass. Looks right. Throws the screen left. It's caught over there. This is Juwan Moody at the 10, at the 15, at the 10. Moody at, at the 5. Moody slung out of bounds at the 5-yard line. Good effort by Juwan Moody. Snaps good, they get it down. Gavin's toe is in it. It is up and it is good. <laughs> Dyson Roberts knocked out of bounds at the 40 yard line. And that is the end of the third quarter play in Orangeburg. Our score, South Carolina State 29. Virginia Lynchburg, nothing. Shotgun snap, Tyrese drew him off sides. Going deep, throwing it out there. It is caught for a touchdown. South Carolina State, Hezekiah Massey from Tyrese Nick. 32 yards, and Bill, you won't find a prettier <laughs> ball than that one Tyrese Nick just threw. And just like that, with 14-28 to go here in the third quarter, it's 36 for the Bulldogs, nothing for Virginia Lynchburg. Long snap count. Here comes pressure from the outside, from the backside. Quarterback's not going to get away. Back at the four-yard line. First guy to get there for South Carolina State. Looks like it was Ricardo Sprinkle. Nick, straight drop back. Nick keeps it himself now. Tyrese Nick trying to make it happen. Tyrese Nick gets the first down, first down and more. All the way up to the 40-yard line. 
Shotgun formation for Tyrese Nick. Nick in the backfield. Nick makes the man miss at the 35. Nick at the 30 gets the first down at the 28 of Lynchburg. Nick, quarterback draw. At the 25, Nick cuts back at the 20, gets the first down at the 15, Nick at the 10, Nick at the 5. Wow, lost his helmet at the 10-yard line. You Corey said. Fields takes the knee, and that's going to be the final play of the game. South Carolina State, but not overly impressive, but did enough to win today. Our coach, second half, we began with possession, and of course, um, you got back to the first quarter and got it moved foot right down the field. We did. We pushed the ball down the field on several occasions. Didn't score very many touchdowns. But, you know, we kicked field goals. Gavin Zimmerman continues to, to be as accurate as all get out, which, you know, is good to have because down the road a piece, we're going to need that. Now, Corey Fields had a pretty good ball game, Coach. He wasn't perfect on the afternoon, but he was on target more times than not on Saturday yeah, against Virginia Lynchburg. Yeah. And, we, and we had another couple drop balls uh, in the second half, but at the same time, Corey's coming into a point where now we've got to figure out if we can get him up over 50%. And he's still... I guess hanging around the, the 47, 48 percent range, and if we could get him to to, to actually complete 60 percent of his balls for this next conference run, then I think we'll be fine. You start talking about quarterback position. Tyree Snick came on and coach, just like an old veteran, that kind of coming in and getting on a bicycle. He just moved the football right down the field. When he came <laughs> we in. wanted to give him a chance to get some some work, and it, it, it's one of the kind of situations where I like to have some film out there on him. Uh, people need to prepare for him, that kind of stuff. That gives them something to do for the rest of their week's work. At the same time, Tyrese is always going to uh, have a place in this offense somewhere. You start talking about his offense and find a place in the offense. A little kid, a little freshman kid out of Ridgeview High School, Jordan Smith, came off yeah. from a slot position, made some big catches, one over the middle for a first down. It was so important. Mm -hmm. Jordan is kind of the heir apparent to that Richard Bailey's inside slot position. And he's actually one of our Call Me Mr. Scholars. He's uh, going to be a school teacher in another couple of years. And he and Nawan Barber, uh, both from Ridgeview, came out last year, are real close friends. And, and uh, uh, Jordan's parents have done a good job of kind of helping Barber do some things from time to time. So both those guys from Ridgeview High School are freshmen technically, and they played a little bit last year, but both those guys we think are going to be really good players here for years to come. It's a good ball game for South Carolina State Bulldogs come away with a 36 to nothing win over Virginia Lynchburg. No injuries really to talk about. So with that, we'll take a time out here and we'll tell you what is up next as it starts to get hot in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference with the first conference game coming up. And it's a big one against North Carolina Central. We'll talk about it when we come back on this edition of the Buddy Pugh Show. All right, Coach, North Carolina Central, we saw them Thursday night against Morgan State. I don't know if North Carolina Central was that good or Morgan was that bad, but we know Davis Richard is a bad boy quarterback. He is. He went for a long one against us last year, like the first second, play of the game. Second play oh, of the game. Oh, yeah. Okay, I knew it was somewhere in there. And 73 he's yards. He's thrown the football accurately, and he's actually run the football very well, too. So we got our work cut out for us. And they've done, they've, they hired Cedric Williams, one of the uh, offensive line guys that played for us at South Carolina. He was uh, on the staff at Georgia State and been around a good bit. And he and uh, Deshaun Goddard, my offensive line guy, are real close. And he's done a fantastic job for them up front on their offensive front. So, you know, they've done a nice job of, of, of I guess, developing their run game. They can run the football. They throw it around pretty good. And, and Davis can really run the football. So, it puts a lot of strain on you anytime you got a great quarterback run game along with a guy that can throw it. You start talking about that coach, and of course you want to keep the football away. We talked about the run game. How important will your offensive line and their play play into this game this week against we the Eagles? We got a week. We got a week to get ready to get ready, really better off to uh, uh, find our run game. And then at that point, give ourselves an opportunity to keep the football away from Central a little bit because if we keep giving it back to them the way that we've been doing in the past here, this year, then we might be in trouble. You know, Coach, they look at you as the dean of coaches in the MEAC, but it's got to make you feel kind of good when you see a kid like Trey Oliver become a head coach and, and really turn that program around, and he's tough to deal with. Played at Central back in the, uh, uh, I guess, maybe early 2000s, late 90s, somewhere in that neck of the woods, and been around for a while, was at Southern as their defensive coordinator, but he's done a real nice job, and they seem to have gotten 
uh, shifted to the point now where they feel that they can compete with A&T and the rest of the schools in North Carolina for talent. So they're starting to really come on and it's going to be really a tough game for us this coming Saturday night. And he's talking about the game. It's, it's an important weekend. It's Hall of Fame weekend at South Carolina State. And, of course, we're going to be inducting some folks into the Hall of Fame on Friday night, Coach. And one of the guys who's kind of a part of your legacy at South Carolina State was Malcolm Long, who was a quarterback who really <laughs> left a mark on this program. Long, Indelible mark. <laughs> long ball. Long. Malcolm uh, from Gaffney, South Carolina, is being uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I'm getting a chance to present him as his uh, inductee that way. And we we really uh, had some good years with him back. I can remember going up to Appalachian State Absolutely. and some of those kind of places and playing when he was playing. So I'm looking forward to seeing all those guys that's going in this coming weekend. And it's a big weekend. We got the Hall of Fame. We got North Carolina Central coming in here. It's a big weekend. We got we to gotta get some things done. Folks, we're looking forward to seeing you. I hope you see you on Friday night for Hall of Fame. If not, at least on Saturday when the Bulldogs take on the North Carolina Central Eagles. First place really on the line because it's the first Mid-East Athletic Conference game. It's still early in the conference race. But, of course, we hope to see you next week also right here on Valley Sports Southeast on the Buddy Pugh Show.